There's folks that are worried about climate change, and they think that if they can just capture carbon from the atmosphere, grab it, and store it in underground, that that's a solution. So direct air capture, carbon capture and storage, those sorts of things. Why are those not good ideas in your opinion? Welcome to the Peter Bick Show. This is our drop-ins, where we just drop in with somebody who's got something cool to say. And our first drop-in is perfect because it's Russ Concer. And Russ and I have known each other since March of 2013. If you've seen Roots So Deep, if you've seen the science in that, Russ is a key, key, key person in making that all happen. Russ is my science whisperer. He he figures things out so that I can figure things out. And um, so Russ, welcome, welcome, welcome. Always a pleasure, Peter. Anytime you and I can talk, it's a good day. Let's do a drop in on carbon flow. Well, it's a good place to start because it really is fundamental. Um, and it's way better than carbon storage or carbon sequestration or all these things that are based on uh, the, 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 the concept that carbon is this big, big evil monster that we need to lock away where it's not going to hurt us anymore. Right. Like it's a waste product instead of the building block of life. There's always a partial truth in everybody's perspective. You you and I uh, joke about s- Star Trek stuff uh, all the time. You're 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 Kirk to my Spock, and there we go. <laughs> and and uh, everyone who grew up watching Star Trek knows that you know we're carbon based life forms, and thank God we're carbon based life forms. And in in the system, carbon itself is neither good nor bad, uh, but it can participate in doing good things or bad things. In fact, the same things it can do can be either good or bad. <laughs> like technology, like the internet. It's unfortunate, in my opinion, that uh, carbon was painted as a pollutant because although it does have deleterious consequences, it also has many wondrous beneficial consequences, not the least. You're talking about the Supreme Court ruling that said CO2 was a pollutant. I appreciate it, right? That had, yeah. to, had to do with whether or not the EPA had rights to... Um, and even responsibility to manage carbon, and it had to be classified right. as a pollutant. So, right. so some things are oversimplified. But the way the way I would say it is, carbon is either neither good nor bad. Um, it depends on where it is and where you're at, and whether you want more or less um, in that system. And underneath it all, to your point or to your question on carbon flow, one, one of the things I can say pretty strongly about carbon is the carbon is so fundamental to life. You, you you want it on the move in life. I like to tell people to think of carbon like money or a currency in an economy where, yes, it's nice to have a bank account that's got a positive balance in it, but what you really want as well is money coming in and money going out all the time. That's how living economies uh, work, just like monetary economies Using the money, loaning it to this business, they're using it to grow their business, and the money goes back to the bank to loan to somebody else. That kind of cycle. Some plant t- takes carbon, borrows it, if you will, from the sky. <laughs> right. Takes it in CO2. Yeah, it right. takes it into CO2, makes uh, sugar is what it makes in its first instance, and but that turns in all kinds of complex compounds and chemicals. Some of them become things like seeds that birds and so on eat. Some of them become nutrients that are fed to microbes in soil. But it all started as carbon in the sky. And when that carbon is moving and flowing in that system, life is living. So flowing carbon is a good thing. Um, and just like in money and economy, when it's doing good things, it likes to do more of it. So it accumulates more and more. So there's more carbon in circulation, if you will. On a healthy pasture, you're getting a lot more carbon cycling. But at any given moment, You've got, you're sort of taking more carbon out of the atmosphere because more is being used in the pasture, in the soils, in the plants. Is that? To keep on with the metaphor, then it's what life is doing is it's investing carbon in building more carbon. Um, Although maybe another topic uh, for another day, what all that carbon is doing is participating in various ecosystem processes that are helping the the ecosystem at at a level to capture more and more sunshine all the time. Um, and at some point it reaches an equilibrium where, you know, it doesn't want to accumulate any more carbon, you know, it's rich enough, if you will, um, in that system, but generally a developing ecosystem as it continues to grow and go through ecological succession will accumulate more and more 
um, carbon. And they're all adapted to their systems. So it's not like there's one perfect ecosystem. A grassland or a prairie is very different than a rainforest uh, in terms of how it works. But both grassland, prairies, and rainforests um, should have carbon on the move flowing when they're working right. And when you see something that looks like death or the carbon is stuck, um, then then that's not necessarily a, a, a good thing. You know, it can be a part of something. So a dead tree can be habitat for birds um, in, in, in that system, but probably because it's in the process of decaying and feeding microbes and doing other it's still on the move as well. It's a slower cycle. Yeah, there's many speeds of these cycles, right, that are happening um, in these systems. And and one of the things that's relevant in, you know, in the very specific space where you and I have spent a lot of time together of animals eating uh, grass, ruminants eating grasses in prairies, this is one of the things the ruminant is doing. By eating it, it's keeping that carbon moving. It's not only feeding the animal that creates offspring and progeny and cycles nutrients back to the land, but it tells the grass, hey, I need to grow more again. Somebody just ate half of me. Um, um, and so it captures more solar energy. So you have to look at this system level, but the high level concept is always carbon on the move is a good thing. Um, and so I kind of cringe sometimes and accept words like sequestration. Um, I used to use that all the time. Yeah. And, and I, I, I do when it helps people understand still, but, but the goal here is not to catch an a molecule of carbon, put it in some other form of carbon and then lock it away. It's what we're really trying to do is help carbon participate in the act of generating, putting more carbon to work, investing more carbon in life, right. keeping that cycle moving. So I, I think a, a really good understanding of carbon is flowing carbon. And so um, if carbon gets stuck in the air, that's a bad thing. If it gets stuck in the plants, it's a bad thing. Um, yeah. And, and um, when carbon is moving, it's cycling energy, and, and, and that's a good thing. There's folks that are worried about climate change, and they think that if they can just capture carbon from the atmosphere, grab it, and store it in underground, that that's a solution. So direct air capture, carbon capture and storage, those sorts of things. Why are those not good ideas in your opinion? It's too linear to think of the problem. You're not thinking at the, at the system level. Um, and, and so this lock it away thing is a part of it. But the real reason it doesn't work is simple energy balance system. It takes as much carbon, excuse me, takes as much energy to take carbon back out of the air as you got out of the thing that put it into the air. So most of these schemes, at least using current technology or what I call spinning tires, whereas nature has evolved precisely to use abundant solar energy from, you know, energy from the sun and nutrients that it can gather from the local environment, mostly through soil to capture that energy and put it to work in the cycles of life. So, and, and that's why it's so um, efficient because it's, life has had roughly 3.8 billion years to get good at that process on earth. And, even in its own story of life's development, it's always crawling. Imagine life in a struggle to make more life um, in, in, in that um, uh, system. You know, life started in wet, warm oceans and at some point crawled out onto the land and, and then it started growing upwards towards the sky. All of that is a story of life trying to figure out how to capture more and more energy. From uh, the sun. From the sun. It's really, if you step back, Okay, yes, there's some mass inputs to planet Earth uh, and losses too, but primarily Earth works as a closed system where everything we have here, almost everything we have here, stays here, goes round and round and round and round, and the only input to planet Earth is energy. Um, and high, uh, highly ordered energy comes in and lowly ordered energy goes out, but energy, and, and there's more than enough. Uh, I think what people are going to find out as we work to um, explore other planets um, is uh, uh, it's there's no place going to be easier than Earth. <laughs> We're just at that perfect place where there's enough energy and life has evolved to uh, 
uh, work, work well. And so our job, for what it's worth, I view whether you're a farmer, rancher, or ecologist, or just someone choosing what they eat for dinner, uh, I think, uh, you know, when we choose things that help life capture and cycle more energy from the sun by keeping carbon moving through the products, it's a good thing. Right now, we have more carbon in the atmosphere than we would like because yeah. it's warming us too it's much. It's out of balance. Yeah. It's out of balance. The more good farming we do, the good, more good management we do, we can get that carbon that's static up here, get it working down here. So yeah. it's not about keeping it down here, storing it down here. It's about using more of it down here because we have more things growing. The people who think carbon is a pollutant and other people who think carbon is plant food, they're both right. <laughs> and, and and so how do we bring that together, right? And, and, and use the excess carbon in the air to feed more plants, to grow more plants um, and help bring that system back into balance. And to build soil in the in the making. And soil is the battery of that system. It's, um, once again, another separate conversation, but soil is this miraculous thing that I used to find incredibly boring that I now I've learned is kind of that key to everything. But so soil is where nature stores all the things it needs to um, capture solar energy. Well, Russ Concert, thank you for being part of the Peter Bick Show, the first drop-in. We, we are grateful for you. My pleasure, Peter. So we're going to be doing more of these. So uh, thank you for being here and, and we'll see you soon.